There are crazy things happening in the world right now. The whole world watched those jaw-dropping images over the weekend of Iran. Illustration of menacing power, the blizzard of missiles and drones. Mark, I don't know if you can hear this right now. Yeah, there's a, there's a column of... Which means you need to prepare yourself accordingly. You can go as far as you want with this. But here are 10 essentials which everyone should have at home. First up, an emergency radio. If you're looking for a cheap alternative, you will find all crazy types. But in an emergency situation, getting updates from the government or just receiving updates in general about the situation you're in can be a life saver. That's why you should never go cheap with these. In the Netherlands, we have a saying that goes, goedkoop is duurkoop, which is the equivalent of buy nice or buy twice. This is especially true when it comes to gear that your life depends on, or at least the safety of you and your loved ones. That's why I recommend the ER300 from Midland. The ER300 is an AM slash FM radio, which comes with a power bank functionality as well. You can charge your devices using USB-A, so USB-A to C for example, or USB-A to Lightning, depending of course on your situation. It could also power a small light for a while. Talking about lights, it has a flashlight on top which boasts 130 lumen. And if that wasn't enough, it also features a dog whistle on it, which is basically an ultrasonic sound that only dogs will hear. Us humans cannot. If you activate this, the rescue dogs will be able to pick that up. Furthermore, it has a grip, which you can use as an attachment point, and of course you can pull out and extend the antenna. It comes with a rechargeable 2000 mAh battery, which is charged using a cable, the hand crank at the back, or even by lying it in the sun. For the crank, it's one minute of work to nine minutes of radio. And for the solar, it's about an hour for 30 minutes of usage. It has a very rugged build, so it can even withstand drops. If you don't need all of the whistles and bells on this one, you could also look at the ER200. And if you want to use Bluetooth, you could also use the 250BT. Now when building your kit, you may want to look into these plastic pouches. They are normally used for storing liquids as a toiletry bag, TSA and EU approved, and the maximum is one liter there. It's also leak proof. You could store all kinds of things in these, but if you want to make your shit hits the fan bag or survival kit well organized, these are essential. Think medicine, think bandages or important documents. You could even unroll toilet paper fold that up and store it in one of these without getting it wet from rain. You could also write on these with a permanent marker or paste a sticker on them to make it clear what they are for. Three, if you have to leave your house because of danger or collapse or natural disaster, God forbid, or anything else which would require you to leave the safety of your house, these will definitely come in handy. Now, if you live in Texas, for example, these might be less important due to the climate there. But if you've ever been to the Netherlands or England for that matter, you'll know it rains a lot there. 217 days per year to be exact. And we know that being cold sucks, but being wet and cold sucks even more. And that's why you should probably get one of these. It's basically a rain poncho with the same material as a emergency blanket, meaning it will reflect up to 90% of your body warmth. Additionally, you could also use this one as sun protection in warmer climates as a tent. You can also opt in for a more traditional one. They store away easily too. If you really want, you could also buy a regular poncho, but keep in mind that these will only work in a rainy situation and not so much in a cold situation. Going without electricity is no joke. You may require electricity to cook your food, power on your washing machine or keep you warm in the winter. But did you ever think about light? You'll find out quickly that it gets really dark even in the big cities. And the moonlight is not going to help you indoors. That's why you should look into getting candles too. You can use cheap tea lights, get a bunch of those. Or you could invest into something else like this. These tins are usually made out of beeswax, which burns cleaner than the regular paraffin ones. So less smoke produced and better for the people who are sensitive for that. Especially since you will be lighting those indoors. Beeswax also lasts longer, which means you'll have a lot of light out of one tiny tin, about 30 hours to be exact. These also have three wicks, meaning they burn evenly. 
and nothing is wasted. If you have all three of those lighted at the same time, the time is reduced from 30 to 10. So keep that in mind. Adding to that, you can of course invest in a good flashlight, like this crank and solar charged one, which will ensure you will always have light, even if you're out of batteries. But flashlights won't work as well when you're trying to light a room. That's where candles come in, but also something like this. This is a inflatable lantern, which gives a nice 360 degree distribution of light. It is also very lightweight and folds flat, so it's easily packed away. It's charged via solar or just your regular cable. It lasts up to 24 hours, but if that's not enough, you could always power these on with a power bank or even a power station. Another thing that is essential is something to heat up your food or boil water. I got this portable camping stove a while back to ensure backup to the regular kitchen. I currently use induction as my main way of cooking things and that works fine but when the grid is down or it's severed due to an emergency, you'll need a way of cooking things. A simple set like this will only set you back like $35. But make sure you practice with it too and not just store it away. You'll also need a few of these cans as fuel. These are all relatively cheap, like $5 a can. Most of these sets run on butane or propane. Water. This might seem obvious, but you'll need three liters of water per person a day. That's two liters of drinking water and one liter for hygiene, washing, cooking, etc. So you'll need a few of these packs of two liters preferably stored in anything other than thin or flexible plastic because of those BPA chemicals that leach into water. Water doesn't really need a best before date on it, but that's really there because they cannot guarantee that after that date, the chemicals will leach into the water. There's of course a lot of solutions for this too, like a water filter, which you can use as a straw, like this one from LifeStraw. In this scenario, you're most likely already out of water or maybe on the go and you desperately need water. You can put these straight into dirty water and at least be sure that it's filtered. These promise 99.99% .99 of bacteria filtered, 99.99% .99 of parasites, 99.99% .99 of microplastics, dirt and sand. But you won't be protected from viruses. Alternatively, emergency rations like these ones from Seven Oceans. These come packed in little pouches of 50 milliliters normally used for emergency at sea, where it's intended for the rationing of water, because if you drink it all at once, you will die. Lastly, you can also get these very inexpensive tablets to make your water drinkable. These will prevent viruses, bacteria, and even parasites from entering your body through drinking water. Two tablets are enough for about two to five liters of water, but make sure you check the dosage on the package. Eight, another thing that might seem obvious, your first aid kit. But you probably have bandages in there, maybe some alcohol to disinfect wounds, and that's all very good. But if you're forced out of your home and you cannot use your car for whatever reason, think natural disaster, think the roads are all clogged up due to fear, you might have to walk a long distance. Therefore, you need everything to make that as comfortable as a situation as possible. In the unfortunate situation of having wet socks, a good pair of wool socks for each family member that is able to walk, of course, but also blister bandages. These are a big relief when you need them. Now, the next one is literally anything which will draw attention. Light sticks, a mirror, a light, a whistle, anything. There is a lot of products and solutions for each problem, but it can be very simple too. I think this is important because if you want to be found, screaming is simply not enough and wastes too much energy. A 120 decibel whistle requires little in comparison to screaming out your lungs and are relatively inexpensive. This one in titanium is a little nicer, but there's also plastic ones. I generally don't recommend steel or stainless ones since those will taste very metal, obviously. And in a normal situation, that's just annoyance, but if you're already out of water, that can be more than that. There's also these things that produce a huge sound if you press them and they are not battery powered. If you think your flashlight is enough, make sure it's at least waterproof because if it's not and you find out when it's too late, you are left to screaming to get people's attention. Or put it in one of those plastic zip bags or product number two in this video. That'll make anything waterproof. 10, lastly, 
Coming back to staying warm, get appropriate clothing for your climate. If the winters get below zero degrees Celsius, make sure you have gloves and ones that actually keep you warm. These fashion gloves won't really help. Additionally, get hand warmers. These satchets contain a mix of iron, water, activated carbon, and a bunch of other ingredients. But when it's opened, it will be warm within 10 minutes and stay warm for hours. These will get you through very cold environments. You can also put these in your gloves or even in your shoes. They are very easy to use and inexpensive. Now stay tuned for more lists, survival kits, products, shit hits the fan bags by subscribing. Thank you very much and have a nice day.